alive here on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University on this rainy and will be chilly Monday evening. A line of severe weather came through here about an hour and a half ago. It's going to cool things off quite a bit by in the midweek. We'll be in the 70s, lows in the 40s, and the forecast for homecoming should be pretty good. Pleasant temperatures for homecoming as Texas Southern comes to town. Well, the Braves, a tough loss on Saturday against Grambling, fell behind and had a chance at the end. Lost that game 28-21. to Charles Edmond here with Alcorn head coach Jay Hobson. Coach, good evening. Good evening, Charles. Well, I tell you what, uh, yeah, we kept fighting and plugging, but that yeah. tough start. Yeah, we, we started off slow. and We gave ourselves a chance at the end. And, and, but, you know, we had, you know, we, of course we went down one drive and had this field goal, and they held us on the goal line stand on the two. Where, you know, we had that, you know, and Billy, you know, he catches that ball 99 and 100 times in the end zone and drops it. and, and um, But, you know, it's football. And, and uh, you know, the, the turnover early, Certainly gave Graham some momentum because they got up quick on the two-score lead, and I thought, uh, you know, again we did start out slow. I thought as the second half came in, um, we really began to settle down, and, and um, you know, I thought as the fourth quarter started, we began to take over, but it was uh, too little, too late, you know, at the end of the day. Again, if we'd had about another ten minutes, I think we would have continued on, but we don't. So uh, that's football, and, and again, just uh, you know, one thing. We can't. We got to execute. I think that we all realize that as coaches and, and players, just uh, execute better and give Graham and credit. They deserve the win. We'll talk about this one. We'll have the highlights coming up. Give us a call 601-877-6595. 601-877-6595. Send us an email. Football at allcorn.edu. We do have an email that we'll get to coming up on the program. Let's get right to the highlights. Jay Hobson. Allcorn won the toss. Deferred to the second half. The Braves almost got their hands on the football right off yeah, the start. Yeah, that would have been a big one if we could have gotten that. You know, we kind of went through, I think it might have been Hendrick or it was Corey, but uh, we almost had a chance to fall on it early. And that would have been a, a you know, those are different type of plays, but uh, we didn't get it, and that's just the way it went. The Tigers started at their own 22, converted a third down and 14, a pass interference penalty on Gatewood. The Tigers scored on a touchdown of Jonathan Williams' two-yard run, completing a seven-play, 78-yard drive. So Grambling, Jay Hobson, out in front early. Yeah, out on, but they got had a uh, they had a um, pass about the midway through that little drive. Where we had just a missed coverage, and they hit us for about 40 yards. So again, things we got to clean up. But uh, you know, they started off fast, and uh, then that next possession we had the big turnover. Yeah, the Braves' first drive started at their own eight-yard line on a third down and seven. A Tiger penalty made it third and two. The A train a loss of five is. See, or a Sopway brought him down. So as we fast forward the action to 9.37 left in the first quarter, Grambling with a 7-0 lead. The Bray's second drive started at their own 7. Ragsdale, a uh, five-yard run on first down. And then on this drive, on the second drive, third down and four from the Braves' 13-yard line. All security. Yeah, and they get they get they ran a little egg stun off the edge, and, and uh, you know we actually had, had um, you know at that point we needed Didi to zone out there on the guy, and uh, but it was they gave a little twist, and uh, John thought the edge man was uh, jump up the field for the pitch, and, and then he and the X came inside, and then at the last second he decided to pitch. Just you know sometimes you just gotta eat it and take the yard game, but uh, uh, you know just an unfortunate thing. And, and, uh, had to needed the defense to come in and get a stop after that, and unfortunately we couldn't. Yeah, Grambling off the uh, turnover started at the Braves 14, a Jonathan Williams two-yard uh, run, and then it was an 11-yard run, so first and goal from the Braves four-yard line. So the turnover was 14 and nothing halfway through the first quarter. 7.51 left in the first. Braves' third drive started at their own 20-yard line.
So the penalty helped and got to the Tigers 20 yard line, Jay Hobson, and he McRaney on for a 37 yard field goal. Wide right. Talk about that drive, though. Well, it was a good drive. I, th I thought uh, it was a drive that we needed, and we got down there, and, and, uh, and we had a third down where there was, you know, where the DB and Billy kind of got tangled up. We were kind of hoping for the interference there on that third down uh, pass because there was a lot of contact. But, um, you know, we got Hayden, and we thought we'd get the three points because it's still early in the ball game. Try to get some points on the board, and unfortunately we couldn't. So Bramley took over at their own 20 with 2.39 left. Jonathan Williams hit Chester Rogers for a 65-yard bomb to the Braves 14. So it was first down at that point. Right before that, that was the bomb. And yeah, then all they, of a sudden, broken, the turnover. Broken play where the guy kind of drifted in behind us and they hit the quarterback scrambled around and hit the, hit the big one down the sideline. And big play by Cookie, uh, stripping him and getting the ball out. So at the end of the first quarter, Jay Hobson, it was 14 to nothing. The defense hung in. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a game where uh, they had had a, a big play, a couple big plays, but the, the first drive started, we didn't like. But other than that, you know, we had the turnover drive, which is about a 10 yard drive. But, Thought we were, you know, we were playing hard, and, and uh, you know, we, we knew it was a long game, a lot of game left, and that was one of the messages I told them early, you know. So we just had to keep plugging, and um, you know, we got a little bit better there toward the uh, end of the second half, in the, in the first half. Ten minutes after six o'clock, we're taking your calls at 601-877-6595. A lot of ways to check out the Jay Hobson Radio Show. It's now on SoundCloud, where you can check it out anytime. After tonight's uh, program, also it'll be on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So a lot of ways to check out the Jay Hobson Radio Show. If you want to listen, if you want to watch, check us out. We'll take a one-minute timeout, ten minutes after. Second quarter highlights coming up in one minute on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. And welcome back to the Jay Hobson Radio Show. 11 minutes after, hope to see you on campus throughout the course of the week for homecoming 2014 as Texas Southern comes to town. We'll be talking about the Tigers who are off this past Saturday a little bit later on. Darrell Asbury and his team very much in the Western Division hunt. You talk about a lot of surprising storylines. Grambling playing well, obviously in first place. Texas Southern who had it down here last year. Of course, the Braves doing their thing. So a lot of good things happening with other teams in terms of their improvement. So every game, Jay Hobson, from here on in, it's going to be a dogfight. No question. That, that's, our league's always had a lot of parity, so it's always, uh, it's always kind of like that. Sometimes the teams change, but there's always always a fight. We've, we've said it here to late November <laughs> a lot, Charles, and we're looking at scores, so it's, it's a dogfight. All right, let's look at the second quarter highlights. Grambling begins the second with the football, first down and 10. And uh, they moved the football to the Braves' 22-yard line, where it was third down and 10 as they started at their own 15, got to the Braves' 22, and on this play, third down and 10. It's 12-play, 85-yard drive. Yeah, that was, um, and we had them third and long right there. You know, that was one of those situations where, man, we wish we could have got them off. Uh, you know, we the kid got off the line pretty clean right there, and, and uh, we just got in a trail position, and 
quarterback. We were, you know, Damon was hitting the quarterback right as he threw it too, because we had a little five man pressure going, and, and I mean, it was just like bang bang, and the quarterback got it off, and they got on top of our team and touched up. So it was twenty one to nothing, three scores down with twelve away left in the second quarter. As we fast forward the action to five thirty eight left till halftime, the Braves started at their own sixteen yard line. That was a pretty good drive there, Jay Hobson. Talk about the change of pace with Lenore's footman in. Well, sometimes it's, I mean, there was really nothing to it. We just felt like, um, you know, it's always good sometimes to, especially for John, just to have a series off there and just kind of sit down, settle down a little bit and just look at everything. And Lenore's came in and uh, did some good good stuff on our counter game. And, and uh, you know, I thought uh, did a real good job on that drive. And, uh, of course, you know, like I said, Lenoris is a young man that is, John's our starting quarterback, Lenoris is a young man that is a talented, talented young man that deserves to get some snaps too, you mean, because he's going to be, Lenoris, you know, here, you know, he's going to be a really, really good football player too, so he, he deserves some snaps, and uh, he made the most of it, did a good job, uh, and so, um, you know, that was a big drive for us because we were able to get some points on the board right before half. Yep, and uh, the Braves had to settle for what appears is a short field goal attempt. Jay Hobson, I knew that it was going to happen. Just in the back of my mind, just, just you know, it was one of those situations in between there was a short attempt. The assumption is always oh, going to kick it, but then uh, to talk about the key to the execution of that play. Well, I thought it was good. I thought Zaire did a good job, and Andre did a great job getting out of the flats. And, and uh, you know, as Zaire kind of had a run pass option right there, and uh, you know, I think he, he saw that he had a little bit of guy that was kind of pursuing him, just dumped it off to Andre. But uh, it was a big play for us because. Um, it allowed us to get back in the ball game. We knew we got the ball to the second half, so uh, you know it gave us a chance to get in there, and, and uh, you know at least we're just a two-school ball game now. So instead of 21 to three, it appeared it's 21 to seven with 122 left till halftime. The Tigers' next drive started at their own 44-yard line, and after an ineligible man downfield penalty, it was second down and 15 right here from their own 39-yard line. They've been picking on, teams have been picking on Gatewood the last three weeks, it appears. Yeah, and Warren, Warren makes a lot of plays, so that's good. I mean, it's, uh, he's, he's been a good player. He's been a playmaker since he's gotten here, so that's, uh, I hope that trend continues. So the Braves got it first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. It was a fourth down and one, and Gibbs fumbles, some time went off the clock. Talk about the last few seconds of that first half. Well, what I did was it was fourth. I thought we got the first down, but we uh, the spot didn't didn't warrant the first down. So it was about 29 seconds or what, so we just let it run down. So because the fourth and one, I didn't want to not make it and then give them the ball back on the 40 yard line with 20 seconds. So what we figured, we just let that thing run down to two seconds and then just take a shot at the end zone. And uh, we got, John got sacked before he could get the ball off of the Hail Mary. So as you look at the halftime, Coach, 21-7 to seven thoughts uh, to your team at halftime? Well, the biggest thing that I talked to the team about is still a game. I mean, really, and, and I'm, I'm pretty real in what was happening out there. You know, the first, we had the big pass. We had the uh, miscoverage on the first big pass that kind of set them up down in our territory. Then we had a, then we had a, a, a little edge pressure where we should have gotten the quarterback, and, and we missed him, and, and he went down to two, and they scored. 
But then we had a fumble on the 10, which led to a quick score. So boom, boom, it's 14. And uh, we had them in third down and long. We allowed them to convert right there for the, for the fade touchdown. But in the whole, I mean, you grab them credit, they're a good team. They, their kids get scholarships too. So, I mean, we knew they were a good football team. But in the whole, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't something that we felt like, oh, you know what I mean, we knew we were in the ball game and we knew we could come back in the ball game. You know, we had had a couple of bang, bang plays that, uh, you know, if, if we had converted a couple on offense, you know, we could have gone there. We had the missed uh, field goal, which we could have gotten points on that drive going down. And uh, we knew we could, we were beginning to move the ball. I think we started off slow moving the ball, but we were starting to uh, move the ball. And I think defensively, you know, it was like bang, bang, and then we settled down a little bit. And I thought, I really felt like we got the ball back in the second half. If we had taken that first possession down and scored, uh, I thought, you know, we were really about to start getting moving. But and we, we had a decent little drive going right off the bat, and then it got, it got kind of, Stop there about the 40 yard line, 45. But uh, you know, again, we're gonna talk about the second half when it gets here. We had our chances. Yeah, uh, we we had chances to. You know, there's you know 13, 17 points out there that uh, we could have we could have converted on, but hey, we didn't. So that's uh that's the way it goes. We'll get into those third quarter highlights coming up. 19 minutes after 6 o'clock, 601-877-6595, We've got an email. We'll get to all that coming up here as we roll along on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back in 60 seconds. All right, welcome back 20 minutes after 6 o'clock. I want to remind you, of course, spray football at Sphinx Castle Stadium on Saturday. Alumni encouraged to visit the alumni tailgating tent sponsored by the Alcorn State University National Alumni Association and the ASUA Club at all home games. Please visit the alumni tent located below the pine trees in the tailgate section for food, fellowship, and to renew your alumni membership. So that's the A-Club tailgating tent. All right, uh, we'll get to the third quarter highlights coming up. And uh, we have a phone call here. Amberson Wade calling from Faraday, Louisiana. So before we get to the third quarter highlights, we'll get to Amberson Wade calling from Faraday, just uh, outside of Vidalia, joining us here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. And we say good evening. Good evening. Thank you, I mean, we appreciate that. Hope we're in the purple and gold. We wish it could have been a little better, but <laughs> at the end of the day, we appreciate that. Do you have a question? Okay, we appreciate it. Thank you. It was a good football game, by the way, with the rain back and forth and and uh, there were some slips and slides out there, Jay Hobson. Well, was yeah, that a concern? Was, well, we, we slipped down a lot. We really did. I mean, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was the second, second uh, you know, it was kind of a high field, you know, high grass, and, and uh, this was really, really slick. But uh, we had a lot of slips. We sure did. All right, as we get into the third quarter highlights at 22 minutes after the hour, the Braves' first drive started at their own 18-yard line, and there was a 44-yard punt after that. Grambling's first drive started at their own 14 and got to the Braves' 28 on second and three. The Braves were called for a personal foul, Jay Hobson, and that was a, that was a tough call right there. 
Yeah, you don't you don't ever like give them extra fifteen yards, and, and um, you know it's a um, but you know it was a the drill they came out that second half and some twelve personnel stuff, and uh, we got out of the gap a couple times on a big run, and, and you know, that's what allowed them to get down the field. And I thought we adjusted well after that drive, but uh, that first drive wasn't real pleasing. Yeah, it was first down and ten from the eleven, and then second down and one from Alcorn's two yard line. So that was a seven play, 86 yard drive. That penalty hurt, obviously. So now we're down three scores, but the Braves, as we know, have a tendency to bounce back after a little adversity. So this Braves next drive started at their own 25 yard line. Yep, the Braves coming right back right there with the A trade. Then the Braves got to Gramlich's 39. There was a fourth down on this drive, fourth down and two, with 6.43 left in the third quarter. Now, the question is, on that third down play, the spot, yeah, don't get me started. Yeah. Hey, you probably saw me on the sideline on yeah. that one. I, I wasn't, I wasn't real pleased with that. Uh, I thought that, you know, in my opinion, I thought that was a first down, third, but it wasn't. And you know, we again, we didn't execute on that fourth down play very well at all. And uh, you know, all we needed, and really, we probably needed a whole yard. Where I thought we had the first, but at the end of the day, if that we didn't have it, I thought it was a, like an inches situation. But uh, again, we didn't get it done. So the Braves got the ball back, however, with 5:31 left in the third quarter. You talk about opportunities. So with 5:31 left, the Braves got the full uh, got the football right back. talked about it, we talked about it. Braves uh, in business got to GSU's five, converted a fourth down and one from uh, Grambling's uh, 21 yard line. So Jay Hobson, here we go, as we had another big opportunity right here on this play, fourth down yet again. What should have happened there? Well, I mean, it, really the heartbreaker was third down. You know, we had Billy. Billy was in the end zone. And, you know, like I said, Billy's a, he's going to catch that ball 99 out of 100 times and, and hit him right in the hands. And, and uh, just one of those deals where you know, it happens in football. And, uh, you know, really I thought, you know, for third down is the down we, we basically, uh, you know, should have stuck it in. But fourth down right there, you know, we just we needed to get open and, and uh, convert. And uh, we didn't again, and that's what we talked about earlier in the show, you know what I'm saying? You drive down there, don't get your field goals, don't get your touchdowns. Uh, those things add up, you know. But uh, again, we kept fighting, so I was proud of that. You know, it was the end of three, 28 to seven. And despite that, as you said, we did have our chances in that third quarter and would have some in the fourth quarter. We'll take a time out here, 27 minutes after six o'clock. And when we come back, we'll look at the fourth quarter highlights where the Braves would have some shots to get back into this game and did and had a shot at the end. So we'll take a one minute break as we approach the bottom of the hour on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. We'll be back in 60 seconds.
All right, folks, as we approach the bottom of the hour, we want to remind everybody to stay connected. Alumni and Braves fans, sign up today for all Corn State University email updates and text message alerts to your cell phone. Text the word all corn alumni to 91011 or email the words opt in in the subject line alumni affairs at allcorn.edu. Don't forget calling all alumni. Get ready for the 38th annual National Alumni Midwinter Conference, February 26th through March the 1st, 2015, in Biloxi, the South's warmest welcome the Mississippi Gulf Coast. For more information on the conference and to register before November 30th deadline, visit the ASU National Alumni website at www.asunaa.org. Org. All right, as we approach the bottom of the hour, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. All right, bottom of the hour here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. We already had a call. We got an email we'll get to, and we'll break this game down. Let's look at the fourth quarter, Jay Hobson. You know what, with the way this game went, I, I thought that uh, the way we had our shots, even though we didn't take advantage in the third, I thought we'd find a way to at least tie the game in the fourth. But let's get to the highlights. The Braves' first drive in the fourth quarter started at Grambling's 46 with a minute gone by in the fourth quarter. McKenzie for 11 yards, and it was first down from Grambling's 35-yard line. So it was first and goal from the two, second and goal from the one. Baker lost two, then third and goal from Grambling's three yard line. Well, nothing was easy. Let's talk about this Grambling Tiger defense. Oh, they did a great job. I thought they played hard and uh, I know they played aggressive. Uh, Again, um, you got to give them credit. They, like I said, they, they did what they had to do. All right, so it's 28 to 14 at this point, 11 and a half minutes remaining. Grambling's next drive started at their own 26. They converted three third downs. There was a fourth and seven. And then uh, it was a pass interference penalty on that drive on, on Quentin Cantu, and that was a tough one. Yeah, yeah, it was. It really, it really was. And then there was a fake punt. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and, and think about we had that, we had that stopped, and our guy, two guys ran in the same gap. You know I mean, we were actually waiting on it because they did the, they did the same thing uh, against uh, Jackson a few weeks earlier about the same area. So we had the perfect deal on forward, and just at the last second, our guy just jumped back into the gap that another guy was in, and then allowed allowed their guy just kind of squirt on through. So that was kind of, you know, that was kind of frustrating. The defense came to this rescue right there and had a big stop. Yep, and then they had to settle for a 21-yard field goal with 8.05 left with the game kind of hanging in the balance a little bit. Yeah, so that that was a tough thing too. We were able to keep points off the board, but time off the clock there. No, no question. And, 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 and you know, the clock, but especially when you're down in the fourth quarter, becomes a critical thing. All right. So as we roll ahead here, the Braves took over at their own 20 yard line. There were two pass interference penalties on Dwight Amphy, so that picked up 30 yards. The Braves got to the Tigers 33, where it was first down and 10. So you saw a little something there with Dwight Anthony was called for two pass interference penalties. First down and goal from the three yard line. Yep, it's a ball game. It's a ball game. So it's 28-21 with 317 left. What's the key here going forward? Well, it's a, um, we had a little two way deal we tried to do on the, um, you know, they were kind of mishit the ball we were, we were trying to do on the, on, the, uh, on the kick. It wasn't necessarily an onside kick we were doing. 
it was a mishit and it kind of looked that way. So, so it was kind of a two-way deal. We were working for it and, and um, just didn't quite execute. Yeah, I was wondering, is that was it an onside, was it a squib or something in between? Uh, but nonetheless, Grambling got the football um, at their own 29-yard line. So Dwan Martin for no gain, Jonathan Williams for a yard, and a big third and nine coming up from their own 41. That's probably the ball game, you know. I mean, it, 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 we still were able to stop and get about 50 seconds left with the offense. But, uh, man, that was a big third down conversion. Uh, you know, we could have got them off the field there. We give our offense about two minutes ago. I think we would have gone down there and tied it up. Then we had one timeout. I thought we might have to burn it. But then on the fourth down, Grambling goes for it. It's a pass play. It's an incomplete pass. So now the Braves take over with uh, at their own 42-yard line. So the Braves were able to move the football a bit here on their last drive. We were able to, 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 you know, dink and dunk, and, and, and we got that, Jay Hobson, and we had a timeout in our pocket, nine seconds left. Yeah, and then we, and then we uh, you know, it's one of those games you wish it was on TV because, you know, you had the, uh, as, we, as we ran our last play, got down to about their 20 and stepped out of bounds. I think they might have, we might have had about one more left, one more second, you know, but of course, naturally, the time runs out, you know what I'm saying, it's one, but, you know, if you cross the, sideline you know, sometimes with those TV games you're allowed to get that in one second yeah. so you can go back and review and do all that kind of stuff you know but at the end of the day I thought our guys fought hard but uh, you know it just wasn't enough and again we had our chances and uh, you know we, we, we got to take advantage of those opportunities when they come if we want to be successful. 36 minutes after the Braves fall 28 to 21 a game in which the Braves fell behind 21 to Nothing at 28 to 7. Fall a score short. We're going to take a timeout. We'll go back to the phone lines. Tommy is standing by. We have an email to get to. And uh, we'll break it down and we'll turn the page and look forward to Texas Southern coming to town. We'll take a one minute break. We'll be right back in 60 seconds on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Yeah, see, on there. Yeah. And they let a few seconds burn off, you know what I'm saying? They were letting that clock run. I was trying to, every time I was watching it, because after the play would go, you'd go about two or three more seconds down, you know? Yeah. And you know how it is, you know, with three minutes, and those those four or five seconds, seconds yeah. are going to be vital. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know where did he step out of bounds that last one, 25 yard line? Yeah. 20, somewhere around there, 20, yeah. 25. Yeah. You know, and so he gives you just one more shot at the end zone from the 20 or 25, you know? Was it supposed to be a. Uh, that hook and ladder it's play. It's a ladder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it was. I thought maybe we'd go maybe medium with a one time out. You know, really, if you looked at it in film, if George just pitched it quicker to the, if he just got it pitched and then became the lead blocker, we probably would have, we could have stolen probably. All right, 37 minutes after, we'll get to the phone lines in one second, Jay Hop. So we were talking during the break, and, uh, you know, you talked about how these replay games, and we had a couple of them on television, how every second matters. And uh, we may have had another three or four seconds there at, at the end. But then on that hook and ladder, on the final play, let's go back to the strategy a little bit. It was nine seconds, one time out. I guess in the back of my mind, I was thinking, okay, we get maybe a medium field shot. We got a timeout, burn it, and then the Hail Mary. But then we had the hook and ladder play. Well, if you, and you get the hook and ladder, you, you know, that would have got us. If we just kind of, you know, got out of bounds a second or two quicker, you know what I mean? Then, then you know, you give yourself two seconds 
in one second, and you get a, it's a lot easier for the 20 or the 25 to score than it is from the 45 or 50. Right. So instead of a Hail Mary, you open up a lot of different choices and a lot of different things that you can do to score. So, I mean, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, again, you don't want to be in that situation where you're counting on a Hail Mary or a last second play. But, um, you know, we're like, but we fought back, and again, we had the ball with an opportunity at the end to win it. And uh, you know, that's two of the Southern Miss and the Grammy game where, you know, but, you know, we had opportunities there at the end to do something, and, and uh, you know, we just fell short. We lost the game by seven and a game by six. All right, 39 minutes after, let's go back to the phone lines. Our producer, Jamario Brooks, is Tommy Nader from Edwards joining us. Good evening, Tommy. Good, e good evening, Tommy. Yeah, they, they got they got some good insight. <laughs> right. Right. What? I, th I think you guys. I think you got some football coach in you, Tommy. I might have to put you on staff, man. <laughs> but I agree with you. I mean, that, that is critical. We got to stay on top of routes, and uh, certainly footwork is always critical in that throwing game. And, and uh, you know, I, I, again, it's two weeks in a row. I think you got a lot of wisdom and insight there. I agree with you. about that, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, it's, uh, and trust me, they're working on it, and, and uh, Coach T does a good job, and I, I know, I know, um, you know, like last year, I know they were, like, number one in the league in past, I don't know what we are right now, I don't even read all that stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, I agree with you on a couple of past, we got to stay on top, and that's something that, uh, you know what I'm saying, I know Coach T harps at them on that, so hopefully we'll be solid this week coming up and uh, have a solid game. Appreciate it. No, All thank right. you. All right. All right, Tommy. Thank you for your call. Tommy calling from Edwards. As we uh, look at the game, Coach, uh, the final numbers, and we didn't get the final stats. Uh, we didn't get any stats, as a matter of fact, during the course of the game. And when I got home uh, Saturday night, I was able to look at it because they had it all broken down a little bit. We had 295 yards rushing. Yeah, the uh – Again, I told you, I'm not really a stat guy. You know, all that matters is uh, whether you cross that line or you, or you hold them from that line. That's all. That uh, I'm like the world's worst stat guy because I think this game, is, you know, the, it, the flow of the game determines, you know, what goes on. You know, what I'm saying it's not necessarily, and I think that's defensively and offensively. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of things. A lot of times, things get skewed, and, and uh, but it's a uh, it's a deal. I thought in the second half, I thought we really, uh, I thought we did some pretty good things running the ball. I thought the first half they kind of shut us down. You know what I'm saying? I thought we came in there with some, uh, I thought the Norris came in there and did some good things with the quarterback counter stuff. But, uh, you know, we, you know, it's one of those deals where, uh, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot of positives coming out of the game. There's a lot of negatives. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the final score is the big negative. But, at the end of the day, we watch the film, and, and it's about correcting, and it's about getting better and learning uh, from those uh, mistakes and execution things you didn't do well. And that's what we have to do. We have to get better each week. And uh, you know, it's a long season. We talked about it. And, you know, and the swag's always a dogfight. You know, it doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter each year. You know, we, we're talking about it, the twists and turns as we go through the conference play, and that's that's the way it is in this league, and, uh, and it's going to be a dog fight all the way through. The slow start, Jay Hobson, was it more so Grambling or was it us? You know, that's always a good question, Charles. I, I don't really know. You know, I, uh, I felt like, you know, you know, it, it was kind of that weird aura kind of when you first started out there. I kind of had that little feeling in my bones there early, you know, and uh, I don't really think we really woke up, you know, moving it and going until somewhere between the late second quarter, uh, first half. But a lot of that, too, has to do with uh, execution. If you execute on a few things, then all of a sudden you get moving, you know, and things get going. And, and like I said, I thought we had the turnover early, which turnovers can be costly, and this one finally cost us. You know, the difference in the game was seven points, and the turnover led to seven points. So it, it got us this week. And, and uh, But I thought we answered well on that drive offensively after the turnover. And unfortunately, you know, that was a big drive if we could have got some points and, you know, closed to 14-7. to seven. But we, we had the uh, field goal attempt that well, we missed. So, you know, the game, it was – you know, we get into that 14 to seven mode. Even if they get, you know, they come back with 21. If we haven't scored before half, it's 21 to 14. And we're getting the ball back in the second half, and I think now it's a the whole complexion of the game is different. You know, what I'm saying you're playing a one score ball game, and uh, and of course on that first play in the second half, we had a drive that could have we could have you know could have should have would have didn't. That's what it's all about. But uh, again. We have to get better, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's, our, that's what we got to do. We got to go out to work and, and, uh, this week and um, go execute better on Saturday, and, and uh, hopefully we will and we'll try to get better. I was a John Gibbs on Saturday, Jay Hobson. I didn't recognize. 15 of 31, a buck 75. He did come out a little bit of change of pace with Lenore's footman, and he was uh, effective there. Uh, just couldn't really recognize the same John Gibbs Saturday for, for the most part. Well, you know, like I said, John's made a lot of plays for yeah. us. And he, you know, he's done a great job. And, and, you know, sometimes there are those games, you know. And, and uh, but, but at the end of the day, John did some good things too, you know. And, and so, you know, I mean, if you've ever played the game or been around, you know, you, you know there's going to be sometimes, you know, this was a game certainly I didn't feel like we were at our best. I was just hoping we would battle through and get the W, not being at our best, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what – you know, those teams that go undefeated, that's usually what happens with them. I've been on a couple of them, been blessed to be on a couple of them, but you know, there's always that game or two around, whether it's week seven or week nine, where the team just, you know, you know, all of a sudden, but they found that, you know, they came in there and, and, and got that ugly win, you know, and, and uh, you know, I was, hoping, I was hoping that's what we could do there in the second half is pull out that ugly win, you know. But uh, like I said, give Graham the credit. Uh, they did what they had to do to win the ball game, and so. If I'm not mistaken, this may have been the first game which we didn't have a 100-yard rusher. It probably is. Yeah. I think so. I mean, we had 295 collectively, Aaron Baker with 80, Ragsdale 68, uh, A-Train 55, Gibbs 51, and uh, Footman with 42. We've had, I think we've had a 100-yard rusher and at least one, sometimes two in, in one game, but not the case on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, defensively, Jay Hobson standing out, Anthony Williams Jr. with eight tackles, and C.J. Morgan another solid game with seven tackles. Yeah, I mean, it was a uh, – both guys uh, came in there and made some hits, which was, which was good uh, on, the, on the back end. I thought we had a few coverage. Uh, yeah, going back to what Thomas said, we had a few coverage. Mr. Simons there, and uh, we can't have that. But uh, at the uh, end of the day, you know, it was uh, – I thought we kept playing, and, and like I said, I thought defensively in the second half, I thought, I thought we started off kind of sluggish and slow that first quarter, and I wasn't really happy with the first quarter defensively. I thought, you know, other than the opening drive of the second half, I think we, we batted down the hatches after that pretty good. But, uh, you know, we just got to go in this week, go to work, get better. Did the tempo of Grambling, that, that quick, quick, quick pace, did that no, have any impact? No, 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 we that, that, that doesn't have any impact on us, you know. Uh, I think uh, you know, the biggest thing was the broken play. You know, I mean, where you know the quarterback scrambled around, and we started getting our eyes in the backfield, and you know the quarterback, you know, went back and forth to the sideline, and then just heaved it for about a 60-yarder, and then we had the one missed sideline, or they had about a 40-yarder uh, right there. So I mean, you know, those are things that we can correct, and uh, you know, we'll go to work and get better at that.
48 minutes after. We got a break coming up, and we got an email from Leslie Young, sort of a comment. He says, uh, Now that I'm retired, I have the luxury to go to most spring football games. It seems to me that Grambling's gameplay selection was predictable and easy to defend. I think our strength lies with quarterback option plays. They don't know if Gibbs will run, hand it off, or throw it. When you pull them out for a few misreads, there's no rhythm on the field. And he uses an example of my car sputters. I'm going to give it some gas, not pull out the key. The only direction I can go then is downhill. Yeah, I mean, John's our quarterback. I mean, we just settled him down for a drive. It wasn't like we, were, uh, we weren't uh, taking him out. We weren't, nobody was yelling at him or, or doing anything critical. We just, we just wanted him to settle down, you know. And, um, and, and really, too, as much as settle down it was, we had some plays to be all, really, to be completely honest, we have some plays for Lenoris, and Lenoris is a guy that deserves to play. You know, I mean, he's good enough that, you know, it's not fair for him to sit on the sideline and not get any plays every now and then because Lenoris is a good football player. And, uh, you know, but John's our starter. But, you know, it's good to get Lenoris in there because you need your backup quarterback to get some solid game reps because you never know when you're going to need him. And, again, Lenoris one day in this league is going to be, uh, you know, one day he's going to be a nightmare too. Now, I mean, he, he's 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 really a talented young man. So he's earned the right to get a few snaps. And so, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's what we try to do. John's our starter. I mean, and, and that's the way it is. But uh, again, you know, we have a lot of confidence in the Norse too. Fifty minutes after tough loss for the Braves, but good teams respond from adversity, and we'll see if the Braves do just that as we. Preview Texas Southern in a matter of moments. We'll take a timeout and we'll be right back in 60 seconds here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. All right, 51 minutes after the hour, some SWAC news. Another Brave uh, in the uh, SWAC headlines. Hayden McRaney, SWAC Specialist of the Week, punted five times for an average of 41.4 yards per punt. His longest of the day was 59 yards, including two inside the 20. Another solid game from him. Yeah, Hayden's done a tremendous job for the ball for him. All right, uh, Jay Hobson, before we get ready to preview Texas Southern, it's a big week, of course. Um, on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University. Always an exciting week. Homecoming. Emmanuel Barnes loves to say, of course, uh, with homecoming coming up, uh, a lot of events this week, and the broadcast community of the Metro Jackson Alcorn Alumni Chapter will host a commemorative celebration of the game, which is the 1984 game between Alcorn and Mississippi Valley. And it's still being talked about uh, the theme of that program is Gentlemen of the Gridiron, 30 years after the game. We talked before we went on the year. You remember that game pretty well. Talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I remember it. I remember, I remember uh, the gunslinger getting out, and I called the duck formation, you know, and, and uh, you know, that was kind of uh, innovative. I coached with Coach Spurrier a long time ago. He used to call it Emory and Henry, but, uh, you know, I really think that's the first time I just saw the center of the quarterback in the middle of the field, you know, and everybody on the sideline. And, um, I think Rat had a had a, had a four man rush, a three man rush going. And they were just sacking uh, <laughs> Willie Totten at will right there, you know. And it was uh, and uh, but I remember the game uh, well, and I remember the Ike Cole Jerry Rice game, and it was just you know, all eyes were on that game, and it was it was uh, an exciting game, it really was, and um, you know it was uh, just to watch and all the hype and, and all corn just went out there and, and defensively did a great uh, job uh, shutting down. Uh, uh, the 
gunslingers offense, then it was just really, really a neat deal. What do you think that game meant for college football in the state of Mississippi at that time? Well, I think it was huge because, you know, at that time, Jackson was kind of the center. You know, the Mississippi Memorial Stadium was where Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Southern Miss played. I used to catch a lot of – I used to do the triple header. You know, I'd wake up in the morning and catch Mississippi State and – Miami or somebody, or Mississippi State and Florida, and then I watch Ole Miss and LSU, and I watch Jackson State and whoever they ever play might be playing Texas Southern. I just go, I go from 6 a.m. to midnight, and I just yeah. sit there and eat it up, you know, football, football, football. And, uh, you know, it was really neat at that time because that was kind of the epicenter of football in Mississippi, and, and uh, you know, that game was the highest attendance in all of Mississippi history. So no matter, you know, you had the LSUs and the Alabamas and all those guys coming into town, but yet the highest attended game was uh, Alcorn and Valley. And, and I think that just spoke volumes to the uh, attention that that game had. And it was an exciting game and a big win for Brave. Tickets for that event are $84. The event will be held at the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame and Museum. It'll be at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. There'll be a reception at 6 and the celebration program at 7 o'clock at the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame. The theme again is Gentlemen of the Gridiron, 30 years after the game. Tickets are $84 or $672 for a table of eight. There are various uh, sponsorship packages involved as well. Premium, bronze, gold, and silver, as well as a uh, patron sponsorship. For more information, call Marion Mixon at 601-259-0299, 601-259-0299. The Metro Jackson Alcorn Alumni Chapter is a 501c3 organization. All right, we'll take our final break, and when we come back, we'll look at Texas Southern coming up in 60 seconds. Come on back. All right, 56 minutes after the hour, Jay Hobson, let's dig into Texas Southern, a team that was off last week. Uh, one of the surprising storylines in the conference, they opened the year with a 37-35 win over Pravey. They beat Texas College. They beat uh, Central State down in the Bahamas in a classic down there. They beat Alabama A&M. Then they lost 38-3 to Bama State and beat uh, Valley 20-16. They had to pull that game out in the final three minutes. Of course, we know Valley beat Jackson State this past Saturday. So an improving Valley team and obviously a much improved Texas Southern team. Talk about uh, TSU and Daryl Asbury. Well, I think Texas Southern is doing a great job. I think Daryl does a great job. Uh, I thought they were good last year. You know, I mean, I mean, if sometimes you know you, you, you eke out a win here and your record looks better than you might have lost. I think last year they lost, but maybe did they lose to Prairie with like two points or one points last year? This year they beat them by two points. Yeah. It, you know, but I thought they were a good football team last year, and uh, I think I think uh, Daryl's done a great job there. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was a big game, and uh, you know, we got to get rid of Homer Causey was a quarterback last year that uh, Daryl Asbury was high on, and he gave us fits. He almost had 300 yards in our game last year. Uh, as a matter of fact, he did. He had 276 to the end, had over 100 yards rushing. Davion Porter with five touchdowns in the backfield. He was a handful last year uh, in the game in which we won 20 to 13 and had to hold on at the end. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a hard fall game in Houston. But we have we have the utmost respect for all our opponents in the league, and, and uh, Texas Southern's no exception. They do a great job, and we got to be ready to play. And of course, uh, defensively, they have ten sacks, but seven picks. It seems like the secondary is pretty active. Yeah, they are, and uh, I'm saying they're, they're, they're again, they're they're a good unit. They're aggressive, and, and again, we we'll, we have to do what we got to do. We have to execute. You know, coach. A sign of a good team, obviously, is how they handle adversity. It was it's been it's. It's fun 
scoring a ton of points and, and all those you know, one-sided scores. It was a tough one last week. The last couple of days after the Grambling game, people are still talking about it. How's the team responded? I think, well, we're, they're fine. We had a meeting today, and we're going to go to work. You know, we're gonna, past is the past. The future is the future and the present is now. We're going to go to work, and that's what we're going to do. Braves football coming up. Uh, coach, it's homecoming, obviously, and uh, with the homecoming game, every coach on homecoming gets asked the same question, and I'm going to ask it as well. The challenge of preparing for homecoming with so much going on. Yeah, it's, it's always tough with all the distractions. That's something we talk to the young men about. They stay focused on the football game and, and don't get caught up in the, the festivities or for the students and therefore the fans and the alumni. They're not for the student athlete that's playing the event. You know what I'm saying? He's got to focus in on the job at hand. You know, and so it's one of those deals. As a football player, you enjoy those homecomings when you graduate and you yeah. come back, but not while it's uh, going on. So we have to be focused. Braves football at 2 o'clock. We'll be on the at 1.30 with the all-core pregame show. We'll hear from Larry Chatterbox Hill, the Texas Southern Radio Network. At halftime, we'll talk to the sounds of Dynamite Band Director Dr. Ronaldo Murray. The forecast, as of right now, 20% chance of rain. High of 83. We're going to have a big chill down, then a warm-up, then another chill down coming up late week. Coach, let's go get them, and let's get back in the wind column. Thanks, Charles. That's Coach Jay Hobson on the Jay Hobson Radio Show on this Monday night with our producer, Jamario Brooks. I'm Charles Edmond. Thanks to one and all. Next week, we'll do it all over again on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. So long, folks.